All right, Steve says, boom fans. Uh, I'm back again. Uh, first things first, I have to say, I really do appreciate the response that I got from the last video, which was about the uh, speculator boom of the 1990s and then comparing it to today's variant craze. Uh, a lot of good feedback and a lot of brand new subscribers. Uh, I love that. Uh, already uh, appreciate that people are spending some time taking a look at some of my videos. Um, secondly, I have had some uh, people asking me, you know, about my attire. Uh, one thing's first, I'm not your regular comic person. You're not going to see me in a baseball cap with those cargo shorts, and Birkenstocks and flip-flops, and maybe a fanny pack. Um, however, I am about as hardcore nerd retailer that you can possibly imagine. I've been in the trenches for a long time and uh, I spent years researching behind computers. So hopefully that answers some of those questions. Now, the subject of today's little video, and it actually came up on me by surprise. I had something else planned for this video. And then I saw something two days ago. I was on the internet and I saw a little clip, a little clip of Alan Moore at a comic convention many years ago. And he proceeded in front of maybe an audience of 500 people maybe to literally destroy Stan Lee. Basically equivocating that he was like a nobody, just like riding off the success of Jack Kirby. Um, I found that very saddening. I did always have an appreciation for Alan Moore. And I don't think it was necessary. And I think it's completely and totally wrong. So... Hence the subject of this little uh, video. Stan and Jack, creative legends, especially when they worked together. The good thing is, is that we have examples of them together and separate. And those examples give us a glimpse into the creative process. And so when we read interviews and stuff like that, we can go, mm, I, I can see it. I can see it. I'm not going to talk about Jack's previous work before 1961 because it goes on forever and I don't want to do a 95 minute video. Um, so we're just going to deal with the, the 1960s stuff and 70s, you know, uh, his Marvel and DC work. Um, so, Stan and Jack, how did their team work? How, how did that creative team work? Obviously. Jack was the volcano of ideas. Okay, it's like, bomb, bomb, bomb. Well, we can do this, we can do that, we can do this. He was the designer of all the costumes and the looks. He, it was obvious that he didn't get a 12 page synopsis from Stan explaining how each costume has to look. Do you think Stan had that time? He had a whole Marvel universe to run, including all the other bits and pieces and the logistics of a day to day running of a company. Sitting down there and, and explaining exactly how you lick the troll's look's going to be. Uh, no. Jack. Stan would give brief outlines. Here's my story uh, for next month. So, when we say co-plotted by Jack, we really do mean co-plotted by Jack. Um, however, it wasn't like Stan went on the beach with a couple of Mai Tais and then turned up at the office and said... Oh, is, it, is, it, is the work already off to the printers? He was there. He was seeing the art. He was making changes where he deemed it necessary. The reason we know that is because we can see the original art that Jack drew with little notes. You've got Jack's original scripting and Stan's little fixes. What does that prove? What does it give us as observers? As historians, researchers, what does it give us? It lets us know that Stan was the ultimate wordsmith and editor. 
okay? No one could give you that silky smooth dialogue like Stan, just beautiful. He could go from regular, you know, human narrative to grandiose being, ridiculous, over-the-top villains. Beautiful, unparalleled, still untouched, in my opinion. His skill to grasp all that wordage in a single panel, to explain things. It was like, wow, incredible. So you have this creative maelstrom, Jack, coming up with idea after idea. And, you know, you can imagine Jack is coming up with ideas all the time and Stan's thinking, okay, well, we're not going to do it in this issue. Let's, why don't we wait for the next one? Jack, hold on a second. Pacing. Don't blow it all up right away. Now you're thinking, why am I saying that? What's the reason for that? Well, as we know, due to the history books, uh, Jack left Marvel in 1970 and not in the best of terms. According to legend, he pinned his cigar to the wall in the Marvel offices and left. He was very disgruntled, uh, upset and bitter in regards to the fact that all of his work was now being merchandised. He was getting no money from that. And um, also there was a, an article that Stan did that he took great umbrage with. Uh, basically thinking that Stan was just like ripping him to shreds. That can be something for later on. Needless to say, Jack takes his creative prowess with him over to DC. So what was Jack's work like without Stan over at DC? The creative powerhouse ideas just exploded again on the paper. Bomb, bomb, bomb. The new gods. You know, he had the Commandi, he had Demon, Forever People. He, he, I mean, he completely made Jimmy Olsen, you know, readable again. I mean, who read, who read those Jimmy Olsons? Oh, I don't want to cast, you know, any bad thoughts. But let's face it, it was a grind to get through any of that stuff. I mean, I've graded so, so much of that stuff. I look on the inside, I'm like, oh, if you were buying a Jimmy Olsen off the stands. Jack comes on there, it's like, bom, bom, bom. So, when you look through the material, read it, it's all there, it's building, and then it sort of loses its focus. Uh, it's like it was all bang, 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 and then, ooh, wh wh where are we going? What are we doing? And one can imagine that Jack, his imagination was so incredible that he was just so excitable. He's leaping forward and doing this stuff. Uh, whereas he needed someone to step back a little bit and maybe say, hey, uh, maybe you don't want to do all this in this one issue. Why don't you do that for one issue and introduce that one in that issue and explain it. You've got too much going on in this issue. Needless to say, um, Jack's fourth world, you know, sort of sputtered on until it, you know, it came to an end. Um, the DC have been mining that material forever, which goes to show you just how great those ideas were. But at the time, um, you know, Jack was unable to sustain that creative heat on the titles. What about Stan? Stan went through the same thing himself. He did the Silver Surfer series with John Basama. He took Jack's character, because Jack created the Silver Surfer completely we know that even stan admits that stan took that character and decided to do the ultimate stan version of what a great comic was supposed to be the series ran 18 issues and it was cancelled tells you quite a lot me personally I love that run, but even me, even me, Big Stan Booster, has to realize could have been a little bit more oomph in each issue. Sometimes having the surfer flying around the earth 
Oh, woe to me, Shalabal. My life's over. All these poor witless humans, how they don't know what real life is about. It can get a little bit old after a while. And Stan kept hammering away at that. And he was like trying to elevate people up and say, you know, I'm not going to give you Crash Bang Boo. I'm going to give you some of it. But I want to, uh, I want to use this Silver Surfer as my springboard for what I consider the finest comics ever written. What we do know is that John, John Bessema, the artist working on it, he didn't put any story ideas in there. That wasn't his style. He never did. He was an artist and an artist only. The, one of the best ever, of course. But he wasn't someone that would call up, call stand up at three o'clock in the morning and say, I have a great idea. Why don't, uh, you know, in issue 14, why isn't Mephisto? He didn't do that. He got the script, which is probably a little bit more detailed than usual. And he drew it and sent it in. Stan would edit it, make sure that it was okay, make sure nothing had to be redrawn, do all the writing, and the book went out. 18 issues, 17 with John, one issue with Jack. And in the last issue of the Silver Surfer, even Stan seemed to have run out of, you know, ideas of what to do. They needed each other to get to the heights that we knew they could get to. And those heights are clearly seen. They're going to be in print forever. Specifically, the Fantastic Four and Thor. Two runs running concurrently with giant storylines going. Incredible, incredible stories. Powerful, creative to the fore. Science fiction, fantasy. Everything's there. Month in, month out. And just think, Jack's drawing those books each month. And he was drawing three books a month. Sometimes he would do four. But they were in an annual. Jack's the man. I know that. He created all those looks. Those looks that we have today. Lots of looks that were created afterwards have been retconned away, redrawn. No one cares. But when you take away a Jack costume, when you try and get rid of that, there's always going to be someone that's like, oh, man, I, that, oh, I love that costume. What are they changing it to now? Anyway. I just want to calm people down a little bit. You don't have to scream and shout about how bad Stan was to elevate Jack. You don't have to do that. Jack was brilliant. We know that. Stan was brilliant. We know that. Together, they were more than brilliant. They were supreme. The ultimate creators of their time. We're probably never going to see the like again. You can guarantee it. The, the sheer amount of work that they produced cannot be done by modern creators. They can't do it. No modern artist can do two books a month for five years straight. Never going to do it. And still remain enthusiastic and creative and come up with ideas. Imagine that. Jack's on his drawing board. He's working away. He's like, oh, man, I've got to get... And he, he stops for a second and goes, man, wouldn't it be good if this issue had this in it? Hey, Stan, um, I was just... I just have an idea. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, you'll, you'll see the pages. Pure genius. Also, the debate on who the creative person was is easily over. We can see it through the evidence. When Jack came back to Marvel in the 1975, uh, what did he bring with him? In 1976, he unleashed the Eternals on the Marvel Universe. It's a massive story, massive. So the Celestials, the origin of mankind. Whoosh! Jack came back with all these ideas. Um, you know, obviously he was um, a fan of a book called Chariots of the Gods at the time. Google it if you don't know what I'm talking about. But it was massive in scope. He'd come back. He, he came back on his own titles with all the imagination in the world. Um, less so when he did Captain America. Still great. His Black Panther work was... <laughs> his Black Panther was way out there. Way out there. Actually caused a lot of people to be upset. But anyway, that's something for others. Stan after 1972, basically faded away from the actual creative process of books. 
when he did come back and do something, he did She-Hulk. Nothing massive about that. Nothing really creative. So, hence, wherever Jack went, he was creative. He was doing things. He was trying to create things. Even when he went off into Indies and did Pacific. He was creative. Stan is nowhere near as creative as Jack. That's obvious. But Stan's skill at editing, pacing, story, structure, unparalleled. He held that whole universe together for 10 years straight before he handed it over to Roy Thomas. So, let's calm down on this Stan uh, attacking, this tearing down of Stan. There's no need for it. There really isn't. Jack is great. Stan is great. Together, they were the best. Boom!